Welcome, uh, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're going to give a brief overview of the data vault and how it fits into the big picture of ActiGraph. What we want to leave you with is that the data vault is really the foundation for upcoming features and should make your job uh, easier. I am Jeremy Moore, a software engineer here at ActiGraph, and I'm uh, uh, here with my colleague Patrick Cotton, a uh, software engineer also at ActiGraph, and we are the primary developers of the Data Vault tool. This webinar will be 45 minutes in total, and that's including uh, question and answer section towards the end. If you need to refer to this webinar, uh, visit the link on the screen in about a week. If you uh, cannot hear me, then hopefully you're going to see my cursor on the screen. You can switch to uh, telephone and dial in and listen to the audio over the phone. If at any point you have a question, uh, feel free to type that question into the questions pane in the GoToMeeting tool, which should be in the right-hand side of your screen. I'm going to be your moderator today, and I'm going to do my best to receive and answer those questions promptly. There are some questions I may hold to the end of the presentation so we can answer them verbally and, and more thorough. And uh, also, if, if we don't answer your question, um, we don't dislike you, but please email us that question so we can answer it. After today's webinar, you will be emailed a link to a survey, and we, we really uh, uh, hope that you take the time to fill out that survey because it not only gives us feedback on how well we're doing um, on the on our webinars, but it also tells us how you use our tool so it'll better direct future development of the tool and future webinars. Today we're going to be focusing on how access to the data vault and your data is grouped together, the benefits of the data vault, how we uh, price uh, via a tiered pricing model, alternatives to the data vault, and current and upcoming features. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Patrick Cotton. Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick. I'll be uh, talking a little bit about data vault today, going through some of the features, and Jeremy will be fielding your questions as we go. So data vault is a new tab in ActiLife. I'm just going to open it up real quick here. So here's ActiLife 6 and the data vault tab. And you can see we've been using our data vault here for quite a while. We've got a few folders and a, a bunch of files. And we they've been uploaded by various uh, users here at Act, ActiGraph. We have a, about one terabyte worth of storage for our plan. Um, and as you can see, we've only used a very small portion of that. So what I'm going to do here is create a new folder and uh, name it, and go ahead and open that folder up. And let's add a file. So out here I've got a pretty large file set up for uploading. This one is about 80 megabytes. So I'm going to go ahead and start that one now. And as you can see, it shows up immediately. It's uploading and doing its work. And I'm going to go ahead and go out and grab a little bit smaller file to upload as well, give you a little bit of a contrast on how the uploads work. So these are about one megabyte or so each. So as you can see here, both of my files are queued up. The larger one's gone. It's about 12% done right now and, and moving pretty quick. And you can see up here, I'm showing the progress for all of my files. So you may have various files in different folders uploading simultaneously. And they'll all show up here. You can click this link and take a look and see those files listed regardless of where they're located or where their uh, destination in that data vault is. If there's a file in here I started uploading and I decided, you know, I, I really don't want to send that file up to data vault. I didn't mean to send that, that particular one. I can cancel it out and stop it right there. But I'm going to let both of these go so you can kind of see how it works. So close this out and come back in here and we can look around. Uh, you notice 
the information pane I showed before. As we upload files, this will increment. And as we get closer to the uh, filling up our storage, you'll, you'll notice uh, the progress bar change colors and kind of a warning to say, hey, you're, you know, you're about to use up all your data vault. Give us a call and we'll, uh, we'll fix that for you. We'll give you a little more space. So we're about halfway through, a little more halfway through our larger file. So just in the essence of time, I'll go ahead and cancel that one. And as you can see, it just it stopped right away. And now the smaller file is picked up and boom, it's up there. So there, there's our, just a quick run through on actual usage of Data Vault in ActiLife. So what is a group? Well, a group is really just an association of product keys. And what does that mean to you? Well, our typical customers will purchase ActiLife and with that they'll get maybe one full key, full product key which allows them full access to the analytical features in ActiLife as well as other features like the AGD merger and the GPS correlator. Then as well you get three to five light keys with each full key and those are a limited version that really allows uh, doesn't allow all of the analytics and in-depth features of ActiLife, but is mostly uh, centered on allowing device initialization and data download. So those keys at the time of purchase will be grouped into what we call a group, which will be used to drive the data vault group. So those keys will have full access to one data vault to push, pull, delete, rename files, etc. Uh, this provides kind of a central data for multiple sites, so you can have a full access key for doing all the analytics that you need to do with your data and give light keys out to your research assistants who are mainly uh, focused on getting to your remote patients and setting up their devices and pulling data from it and getting that data back to you. Some of the benefits of Data Vault include uh, the ActiLife integration. Because Data Vault is integrated with ActiLife, it becomes kind of a one-stop shop for you where you can manage your studies files, uh, communicate and collaborate with your colleagues all within one application and not have to toggle from window to window to get your files and get your files to someone else and then go in and open files and analyze them. It's a worry-free cloud storage solution that's always available anywhere in the world as long as you have internet access. And so it kind of takes out some of the cost and dependency on uh, IT department that can typically be a point of headaches for a lot of researchers. You got to go through a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy sometimes to uh, change your storage needs through the IT department. Uh, it allows you to share data with your remote colleagues in your group and centralizes that data from multiple sites. It simplifies data backup and retention, which is another IT headache. If you need to make sure that your IT department is doing uh, industry standard backup and redundancy on your data to make sure that your data is safe and secure at all times and protected from device failure. So it's free to start using ActiLife. As of ActiLife version 5.10, we offer a free tier uh, for ActiLife 5 users, we included Data Vault in ActiLife 5 to expose our current users to this exciting new feature. However, <coughs> excuse me. However, we strongly recommend upgrading to ActiLife 6 in order to gain access to all the latest and greatest features, not only Data Vault, but other ActiLife features as well. Support for ActiLife 5 is going to be ending in December 31st of 2012, so that's the end of this year, and we'll become uh, supporting ActiLife 6 going forward from there. So if you, have, if you are an ActiLife 5 user and you're interested in, in checking out Data Vault, just go and go ahead and upgrade to version 5.10 and you should be able to see the limited version. That's a, a 2 gig free storage tier that ha it doesn't have the folder feature but it'll allow you to do some uploads, downloads, etc. to get a feel for you know, if Data Vault's going to work for you and uh, ActiLife 6 users, it comes for you out of the box. And we also do a, a tiered pricing scheme, so we uh, allow you to customize Data Vault to fit your needs and tailor a pricing plan that fits your budget. So what is tiered pricing? Uh, ActiLife 6 
upgraded free tier is four gigabytes. So out of the box, when you install ActiLife 6, you're going to receive a four gigabytes of storage. And that, that's just to get you rolling and, and using ActiLife and exploring the features. And as you determine that you may need more space for all the various files that you're collecting, um, you can contact us and we'll, we'll facilitate that for you. Active Life 5 free tier is slightly smaller. It's 2 gigabytes, but still uh, enough space for you to um, get several files in there and get started checking it out. There are custom plans available, so we can uh, tailor capacity. And it's kind of a marketing area. Uh, us engineer types, Jeremy and myself, are usually concerned more with the technical aspects of an application and less the pricing scheme. So I'm going to defer that to our marketing department and let you guys contact us, and I'll have some information for you later uh, for who to contact about uh, the various tiers that are available, their prices, and some of the discount rates for monthly, quarterly, and annual pricing. Some of the alternatives to Data Vault that are out there right now, typically our customers tend to use one of the first three schemas for uh, file sharing that you see up here. Uh, one of the most common is email, which is uh, doesn't provide any storage space for you. It's not organized. It's just a bunch of emails with attachments in it. It may even limit how big attachments are you can send. So you might have trouble sending your larger GT3X files around between uh, your different uh, research assistants and yourself. Uh, the transfer speeds are marginal at best and you're limited also by how often someone checks their email, et cetera. There's usually no data redundancy with email and, or, and FTP, and it doesn't uh, integrate with ActiLife, so it's not supported by the ActiGraph staff, and the features aren't designed specifically for you. Now, the network share, the third one up there, is definitely the fastest by far because it's something that's kind of it's closer to you and set up on your local network uh, there and allows you to transfer fast, but if you have a remote user that's not on your network, they're going to have to go through slower technology like a VPN or something else just to access that drive, not to mention the problems with uh, dealing with going through the bureaucracy of IT and having that network share set up and then changing the amount of storage available to you and managing whether or not your data is being backed up in a uh, secure and safe manner. Um, and then I'd like to move on to a comparison between one of the, the best-in-class cloud storage solutions that's out there right now on the Internet. A lot of people are using uh, Dropbox, but there are a couple other alternatives there. And uh, Dropbox is a, is a really neat tool. It, it definitely it provides a tiered pricing uh, storage space similar to, to Data Vault. And the transfer for speeds are, are very on par with what Data Vault's doing. As a matter of fact, we did uh, several speed tests for uploads, downloads, large file transfer, et cetera, between Dropbox and Data Vault. And we were even, if not better than, on all of those tests. So we're able to actually keep up with them and even beat them in some cases for the speed of file transfer. Uh, they do offer data redundancy. They have a, a nice data center out there where your data resides, and they they back up and retain your data for a long period of time so that you can be assured that your data is safe and secure. And uh, Data Vault also leverages similar technology to back up and retain your data. However, the where Data Vault kind of inches ahead of the pack is through the integration with ActiLife. Um, the support that you receive through the ActiGraph staff here. If you have any issues, problems, or questions, you just give us a call or shoot us an email, and we'll, we'll respond quickly and get those, those questions answered and those problems resolved right away. And the features are designed for you, ActiLife users. So some of the things that we're going to talk about a little later, such as template-driven automatic uploads, uh, online processing, and various other sharing and permissions-based uh, Features for Data Vault uh, are available exclusively to Data Vault users. Current features of Data Vault include uploading, downloading files of any type. So 
you can upload your extremely large GT3X files uh, that can sometimes reach hundreds of megabytes. Uh, you can download files of any type. You can upload your AGB uh, EPIC data that are typically in the order of, of kilobytes, tens to hundreds of kilobytes. Um, you can upload pictures of your grandmother if you like. Uh, or get, you can organize file in a way that suits your study. So for ActiLife 6 users, you have the folder feature and you can create a folder pattern that, that uh, organizes your files based on demographics or studies or, or however uh, your, your research requires. So it, it mimics uh, computer's file and folder system. So as you saw when we were clicking around before, it's, it's very familiar. It's very similar to, to the browsers that you are probably already used to using through uh, your network share, your operating system, whether that's Windows or Mac or some of you Linux users out there. Uh, there's seamless transition between storage tiers. So if you need a little more space, call us up and we can make that happen instantaneously. Or you need to scale back your space. Maybe you, you bought too much and you decide you know you, you don't you don't need that much space. Give us a call and we can adjust that back for you. Uh, it's an intuitively designed UI for ease of use. The buttons are, are very familiar, and it's, it's just real simple to use. Uh, you can view and cancel your pending uploads. So right now, that, that queue that we pulled up earlier and took a look at, um, you can see all of the different files that are uploading to the various places in your data vault, cancel ones that, that you no longer want to send to the vault, et cetera. Uh, you quickly view your account information and space usage. So as you open the data vault, you know where you stand. You know how much space you have left and how long you've been a, a member of the data vault, et cetera. Uh, fast and reliable multi-part uploads handle large files with ease. Now, what this means is, is we actually use a technology that allows us to take your files and before sending them, slice them into smaller chunks and send them simultaneously which greatly increases the speed and also drives other features that we're currently working on that I'll, I'll get to a little more later. But right now, we're getting roughly 30% faster than the fastest FTP program we could find out there. So uh, it's, it's really quick. And now for the main focus of our presentation, the upcoming features. Uh, the following data vault features will be available exclusively to ActiLife 6 users soon. We're working on these as we speak. Um, first, we have the template-driven storage. Uh, you can improve your data integrity by automatically sending files to data vault on download. Currently, ActiLife provides a template feature, which allows you uh, to create uh, templates for device initialization, naming conventions, file naming conventions, et cetera, that can be distributed to your various end, end users, maybe your satellite light key users. You want them to download your files in 10-second epics and make sure to name your uh, the files with the date and the device serial number or, or things like that. And uh, what we'd like to add to this template is the ability for you to specify that when device files are downloaded that they are automatically sent to a folder that you designate in the data vault. And so you can distribute these templates out to your light key users and have them downloading device data and it instantaneously being sent to you so that you have it immediately. There's no waiting for them to bundle the files into an email or get around to getting them to you and make sure they get across securely. They're, they're there for you just as quickly as they can download them. Uh, another feature we're excited about is the automatic file conversion. Um, a lot of our researchers are really interested in retaining the raw GT3X data, and that's the, the data as it comes off the device in, it, in its original form. And those can be kind of large files, but typically when analyzing a file through ActiLife, users are more interested in, in epics, one second or 10 second or 30 second epics, uh, clustering of data into more manageable uh, chunks that can then be run through the various analytical tools in ActiLife to uh, allow you to kind of see views of your data and, and manage the, the things you like to do with it. So we'd like, uh, we're working on a feature that will allow you to 
they designate that your GT3X files are automatically converted to say 10-second uh, epics um, or maybe your AGD data is automatically converted to CSV or vice versa or any number of combinations. Basically any of the current uh, conversions that we support through ActiLife on a file-by-file -file basis through the data vault, we'd like to allow you to designate to do multiple file instantaneous conversions so that you don't, you're not bothered by meticulously going through and finding your files, selecting the files, and converting them one by one can be kind of time consuming. Uh, another feature, online processing. Uh, we're looking to move things like data scoring and a new, uh, the I new idea of batch processing and reporting to allow you to do a lot of the things that ActiLife can do for you now, only behind the scenes, online, out in the cloud. And what that means is your files are out there and maybe you can select several files to be processed at one time so that you're not bothered with going into ActiLife and opening individual files and setting them up and doing data scoring on one file and then repeating and then repeating again. You can identify these files online and allow them to all be scored uh, uh, simultaneously and then run reports on those multiple files instead of file by file basis. We're also looking to move a lot of the features that are currently available in ActiLife to kind of an online portal to allow the processing, not only the processing to happen online, but allow you access to a web-based portal, which I'll talk a little more about in just a minute. We're also looking to implement a meta filter search uh, that allows you to search your files based on uh, demographic and user-defined metadata. So a lot of times I think our end users like to uh, collect data for various different subject types, and then research data based on particular biometric information. So maybe you're interested only in the you know males age 30, or um, you know children who are highly active, et cetera, or maybe a particular uh, gender, height, or uh, race, or or what have you. We'd like to allow you the ability to run a quick search in the data vault for files that meet that criteria. I think currently the approach most of our end users are, are utilizing is naming conventions, taking files and adding meaning to the name that they give to those files so that later they can pull them out uh, quickly. But it can be a little cumbersome and if you don't include a piece of information in the file name that you want, uh, you may not be able to find that demographic without opening individual files and, and analyzing the, the information in the file it can be a bit tedious and uh, it's not very searchable if you've ever tried to search a set of folders for a bunch of files with a certain word in the name it can be a, a little cumbersome and uh, we'd also like to allow a, a user defined metadata and what we mean by that is maybe you want to um, add metadata such as study name or uh, uh, some other identifying criteria to, to your file when you upload it to the data vault. Well, now you'd be able to search on, give me all the files from study A or study B, and data vault would be smart enough to go find those files and return them to you and save you a lot of time. Um, access control is another feature that is, is currently in works. Uh, the way things work now, data vault allows users within a group of product keys full access to their files. And that means they can upload, download, rename, move, and delete any of the files. And that's any of your users in your group. Uh, what we'd like to allow is you to give limited access to other groups. So maybe there's a, another group of ActiLife users that you're associated with at your organization or, or even outside that you would like to allow them to, to share files. And maybe they want to share files with you, but you don't want to give them full access to your vault. You know, you don't want them uh, going in accidentally deleting files or uploading files that you did not put into your data vault. But you allow them, like to allow them to pull down some files and analyze them themselves and maybe give you some feedback or comparison. Um, so we'd like to, to build in a, a control for you as the end user to allow access to other groups without including them in your group. 
you, we'd also like to uh, give you more granular control within the group. And so we talked a little earlier about uh, uploading from satellite users, and maybe you have research assistants out there, and all they do is initialize devices and then download data from devices when the patients bring those devices uh, back in. And so you want them to get those uh, device data files to you quickly, and so you want to give them upload access, but you really don't want them moving files around or deleting files, and so maybe you give them upload access only. And maybe there's some people who are working strictly on analysis for you, and you just want to give them download-only access so they can't really push files up there or cause duplicate problems or accidentally overwrite files by clicking the wrong button. So you just allow them to download only. And then, uh, you know, you yourself as the, the lead researcher, you want full access. So you want to be able to upload, download, maybe copy and move, uh, reorganize, create a new folder, et cetera. And so you, you, you give yourself full access. And, and we're working on uh, these various aspects of end-user access control. Some other upcoming features that we're excited about is the multiple file folder download. Uh, currently, uh, Data Vault allows you to download files on a one-by-one -one basis. So you go and you click a file and download it. So I just uploaded this file recently um, in this presentation. And so now I want to download it. So I can click on it and pick a lo location for it and download it. And as you can see, boom, it's there. And go out and, and use my file for whatever I need to. But if you have a lot of large files, or maybe you're interested in downloading a full folder from a particular study or something like that, you know, we'd like to allow you the ability to select multiple files or folders and have them download so that you don't have to go through and one by one do them. Now, the downloads are pretty quick, but if you had a lot of them, you could see where that could uh, begin to take up some time for you to do them one by one. Uh, bandwidth throttling is another uh, feature we're excited about. Uh, currently, uh, Data Vault has a first come, first serve approach to bandwidth usage. So as programs begin to use your network resources, uh, they just use what's available to them at the time. And as more programs begin to use them, they kind of try to share and be polite amongst one another to, to make sure that, that everybody gets a little bit of time. But you may want you know, to control how much bandwidth Data Vault allowed to use on your network. So you say, well, I only want it to use 50% of my bandwidth and leave all the rest open for other applications, et cetera. And that's another feature we're working on. Uh, pause resume file uploading. That's a throwback to the multi-part file uh, uploads that I mentioned earlier. Because, we, because of the way we slice and dice files before uploading them, we allow you to pause and upload and then pick it back up later. So maybe you've got a bunch of files or maybe one really large file uploading and you forgot you had an appointment in a few minutes and you, you just really need to leave. And you don't want to have to start that whole download over or the whole download process over. So we'd like to provide you the uh, ability to, to pause that, that down, I mean that upload and pick it back up when you have internet access again and you're, you're ready to do so. Uh, data comparisons, another exciting feature. Currently ActiLife allows end users to compare their data against the NHANES study. Uh, which is a, a big study out there uh, that provided a lot of actigraphy data to give people kind of a standard to, to validate data against. Well, we're interested in providing a feature that allow you to publish your data through the data vault to allow other end users to compare their data against your data and, and kind of validate against what's going on in the real uh, actigraphy data collection community now and collaborate with one another to uh, uh, provide better data. Also, the web portal, which I mentioned a little earlier, we'd like to um, eventually move a lot of the processing and analytical features available in ActiLife to the web so that you're not concerned with uh, deactivating and activating product keys and reinstalling ActiLife on another computer because you want to change computers or move around or you had a research assistant and their computer went bad and so now you need to give them a new one and, and reinstall. And, and we just want to eliminate those hassles by providing something that would allow you to, through your internet browser, 
go and access some of the features of ActiLife that currently you have to go through the client software. And that's a, a good summary of currently earmarked upcoming features that we're working on or plan on working in the near future. Uh, we'd love to hear back from you guys to, to see what how you'd like to use those features as well as other features that maybe we haven't thought of that you would love to see that incorporated in the Data Vault or ActiLife as a, as a whole. So um, please take time to take the survey that you should be receiving an email soon. Um, my boss wanted us to include a picture of the team here that we're kind of goofing off around Christmas there. And that's actually, that's him laying down across the front there. Um, and we like to have fun here, but we also like to build great software. So we look forward to hearing back from you. If there are any questions that Jeremy couldn't answer during the presentation that we are unable to answer for you during the question and answer period coming up, please uh, feel free to contact us at support at theactigraph.com, as well as if you're interested in the pricing tiers and other information, uh, those guys can answer those questions for you. And I, at this point, I'll pass back to Jeremy. Do we have any questions that are outstanding? Yeah, we don't have too many questions. One question we did receive was that, could the access control be configured to be a, a study specific? And, and that is going to be possible. We, we understand that you may reuse ActiLife for multiple studies. And for one study, you may want to share data with one group. And then for another study, you may want to share data with a completely separate group, but remove the uh, ability to share data with the original group. And, and, um, and I think that's just a, a great point in general. Um, we, you know, we're not building ActiLife for ourselves. So if, if there's anything specific, uh, customi uh, customizations or features that you need specifically for what you're actually doing, uh, please don't hesitate to ask us about that. Um, we had another uh, question come in, how secure is the data vault? And uh, we, uh, we take security and integrity um, very seriously. Uh, we send all of our uh, data across the wire in an encrypted form, just much like how you access your bank information online. It's the same technology. Um, and then we also do point-to-point -point integrity checking on the data to ensure that during transfer it made it completely across. So, um, yeah, if there's any more questions, um, you can, I'm not seeing any more, but feel free to email support at theactigraph.com. And uh, I guess that'll wrap us up for today. We want to thank you all for, for joining with us today, and we hope that the Data Vault uh, is, is, is useful to you and uh, we just uh, well, we have an afternoon session if you were unable to make this morning session and uh, we thank you again for joining us.